As Diddy's legal issues continue to mount following another round of allegations of sexual assault, the discourse has turned not to the crimes at the heart of the latest lawsuit, but to speculation about Meek Mill's sexuality. Sadly, this is a turn we probably should have seen coming. As previously reported, Meek is not visibly named in the lawsuit from Rodney Lilrod Jones, who has accused Diddy of sexual assault and harassment. However, speculation was spurred by the description given for a rap artist listed as redacted in the 73-page complaint. He is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Jones's suit alleges that this unnamed rapper was on Mr. Combs' yacht consorting with underaged girls, sex workers. In a footnote, the redacted name is contextualized by saying it's a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Later, the redacted name is alleged to have had sex with Diddy. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper, redacted, R&B singer, redacted, and Stevie J. Due to this line, both Meek and Usher were quickly made the subject of speculation and jokes, with Meek taking the brunt of the reactions. Usher, who might still be busy enjoying his honeymoon, has not responded. Multiple Twitter, I refuse to call it X, users claimed Meek caught a freako in reference to speculation over his sexuality. It's crucial to point out that the redacted rapper mentioned in the lawsuit was not accused of a crime in the filing. It's equally important to note that none of this has been proven. Unlike some of the other allegations, Jones's claim about Meek Mill is not supported by photographic or video evidence. In fact, a key part of Jones's Stevie J-focused accusations, namely screenshots purporting to show him having sex with a white man, have been debunked. Adult film star D'Angelo Knockout. Markey claimed that it was him and not Stevie J in the pictures in question. Furthermore, two women who are identified as underaged in the lawsuit have come forward and said they were the ones in the photos and were not minors at the time they were taken. Even then, the actual alleged crimes involving minors have seemingly not garnered anywhere near the same amount of attention as a passing remark in the larger 73-page document about alleged sexual acts between grown men. Even if the claim is hearsay, it hasn't stopped people from taking something they heard from a 12th party multiplied to the fifth power as fact and running as fast as they possibly could with it to social media, jokes in hand. Put another way, the sexuality center jokes absolutely went off, despite this being the year 2024. Thankfully, several people on social media have since started to call out the idiocy, like so. At one point, Frico was trending on Twitter alongside Meek and Diddy's name. Why Frico? It's likely a nod to the alleged freak-offs mentioned amid coverage of last year's since-settled Cassie suit. Rico, for those who don't know, stands for Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, a federal law that was designed to go after the mafia and organized crime. It allows for prosecutors to link apparently unrelated crimes with a common objective into a prosecutable pattern of racketeering. There are also state-level RICO laws. One example is Young Thug's widely criticized case in Georgia, which rap fans are all too familiar with. Homophobic jokes pushed the topic of Meek's sexuality to upper levels of Twitter's trending topics on multiple occasions. Meek, who often isn't the most graceful person on social media, to say the least, denied the speculation and proclaimed his love for Juicy Pussy. Meek's flurry of tweets have arguably only fueled the homophobic jokes when he could have just said, as one Twitter user pointed out, there's nothing wrong with being gay, that's just not me, or the lawsuit is filled with lies and left it at that. Though he sent out a large number of tweets in response to the chatter, he did at least include one love to the gay people in one of his tweets. It also didn't help that Meek was accused of following a gay porn account with users sharing purported screenshots. Speaking of tweets, Meek got into a lengthy and at times tense war of words with DJ Academics after the media personality spoke on the lawsuit. Amid news of Jones's lawsuit, other Diddy stories have poured in. Hitmaka, 
recently spoke out about the bad boy records founder's diabolical ways. A woman who claimed she was shot in the face by Diddy in 1999 declared that the mogul is guilty. But the argument intensified yesterday as DJ academics went off. While streaming, Meek Mills asked at Twitter for DJ Academics' home address to the tune of 12 million followers. So, of course, if some idiot would call the police, and it happened to be live while he was streaming. It was a really crazy scene as AK had 17,000 people in the chat. After that point, it just got downright disrespectful. He talked about Meek's record label situation. He talked about him being a fake gangster and drug dealer. Although I have to agree with 100% of what AK said, I do understand that he was hot about the cops coming to his house. The live stream went on for about six hours with Aiden Ross coming on, alleging that he had a budget for guess what, y'all? A Meek Mill and DJ academics fight. Crazy, right? Academics alleges that Meek was bunny hopping, and I did find that video. A Chicago rapper would never. Ha. This stems from a 73-page complaint filed in federal court that alleges that Diddy told a producer, while attempting to groom the producer, that he has sex with males all the time and names Meek Mills and Usher. I know, right funny as hell. He even dropped the champagne poppy bomb. Meek never recovered from that, and he shouldn't have. He had Nicki Minaj, a co-sign from Jay-Z, a feature from Drake, and a number one record. How do you fuck that up? Twitter is really his downfall. He all over the internet on every blog site. Dude, like a girl for real. Meek Mill dropped an independent album today and it was garbage as expected. I think French Montana new album is fire. And I heard a couple Dirk unreleased joints, including the old days. But anyways, I didn't know that DJ Academics was that funny and I can honestly say that now I'm a lifetime subscriber. And I didn't know that streamers make that much money. Thanks everyone for watching, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Nope, better yet, we are gonna get into some of this civil suit. Let's go. The guy that's bringing the suit is Rodney Lil Rod Jones Jr. is from the Windy City, Chi-Town. Uh, he was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Jones is the second oldest son and fourth child out of nine siblings. Mr. Jones comes from a long line of gospel music influencers. On or about August 2022, Mr. Jones received a call from Mr. Combs requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album titled The Love Album Off The Grid, Love Album. Mr. Jones agreed and his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since he says, from September 2022 to November 2023, Mr. Jones produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' Love Album. Mr. Jones lived with Mr. Combs for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Mr. Jones resided at Mr. Combs' residence located in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida. Mr. Jones also spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Mr. Combs in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love Album. The claims raised in this complaint have been corroborated through witness statements, video audio recordings, and images that Mr. Jones has in his possession. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. On several occasions, Mr. Combs took Mr. Jones' cell phone and began recording himself. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. 28. Mr. Jones has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, use, and distribution of ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and mushrooms for the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. Mr. Combs providing laced alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, the U.S. Virgin Islands, one, and Florida. Mr. Combs' chief of staff, Christina Coram, KK, 
instructing her staff to retrieve drugs so she can provide it to Mr. Combs for his consumption, Christian Combs drugging and sexually assaulting a woman, Mr. Combs detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact on his public image of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit, Young Miami's cousin and or assistant sexually assaulting Mr. Jones, actor Cuba Gooding Jr., sexually harassing and assaulting Mr. Jones, rapper three. He is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj on Mr. Combs' yacht, consorting with underage girls, sex workers, and R&B singer for. He is a Grammy award-winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bajon billionaire in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home, consorting with underage girls and sex workers. On or about September 12, 2022, Mr. Combs held a writer's and producer's camp at Chalice Recording Studio at 845 Highland Ave, Los Angeles, CA 9038. Present at this camp were Mr. Combs, his son Justin Combs, and Justin's friend named G. Mr. G is a 30-year-old tall African-American male. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. This writer has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp. One evening during this camp, Mr. Combs, J. Combs, and G were in a heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where Mr. Jones was sitting. Mr. Jones was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots rang out. Mr. Jones recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Mr. Jones immediately went into a state of shock and feared that he would be shot next. Mr. Jones genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting ended, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Mr. Combs and Jay Combs exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg hip area. Everyone stood around looking upon G. Frustrated by the lack of aid to G, Mr. Jones dropped everything, ran to G, and immediately began placing pressure on G's gunshot wound to his stomach. As he was applying pressure on his stomach, Mr. Jones realized that G was gushing blood from another area near his leg hip. He decided to lift G and placed him to sit on the toilet. Mr. Jones asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Mr. Jones lifted G and brought him to the ambulance at the studio's front. At this time, Mr. Combs and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. Mr. Combs gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He also forced Mr. Jones to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. 